So sometimes you may see this yellow alert, a potential security vulnerability on your GitHub repo. And this is GitHub's way of flagging you that you have something that it doesn't really like serving. And they could even stop serving it on GitHub IO if you don't fix it. So to figure out what to do, what the problem is, you click on that button and then it shows you one or more libraries that are causing the problem. And if you click on the library here, Bootstrap, it gives you some remediation. Possibly it'll be a solution. And basically they're saying that you need to upgrade to greater than or equal to version 431. Okay, so let's stop now and take a look at the fact that when you get one of these templates, you may be getting yourself into some maintenance that you don't want to. And I'm going to show you what that maintenance is for, why do we need why it needs to have a package JSON, and I'm going to give you a suggestion as to how to get around this. If you're just taking the template because you want to use the bootstrap styles and possibly the template styles to help you get going on a project, you may not be wanting to get into all of the maintenance that comes with having to update your package JSON dependencies or dev dependencies objects. And um, these objects are, are part of NPM and, and allows us to share and use a lot of open source JavaScript. Let's take a look at how we might, what other ways we might work with, the, with this and, and why we even have to do this kind of maintenance. So I've Googled the modern business template here, and this is the current um, source for it. And I can, you know, this is like any, any template I might find out there. I'm going to download the code, and I'm going to unzip it. And then let's take a look at what we're actually getting into here. So uh, let's see, I'm going to open that up with VS Code. And you know, I can kind of like do a quick test here on it. Take this index and open it up. And yes, this is my business template. All looks good here. Um, what kind of files in here are, are causing these maintenance problems? And if I look down here, yes, so I have a package JSON and this is where um, this template project is keeping track of what it needs from JavaScript or CSS. It's basically, it needs files because there, you'll see there's a gulp.js file and gulp is a JavaScript task runner that is allowing it to build the vendor directory. So this whole vendor directory is what contains bootstrap, CSS, and um, that needs to be built by running this gulp file. So let's just take a look. So in, before I can do anything like that, I need to run npm install to pull in all of the libraries. So here I am. I'm needing to build um, this bootstrap CSS um, and jQuery. Let's see. All of this is under vendor. So all of this code is going to be supplied that you see under vendor. Um, by running gulp. And before you can run gulp, you need to do this download. Now I can see there's one npm audit fix coming in here. So let's just npm audit. npm audit will give you a list of any of the vulnerabilities. And I can see there's this braces and it wants it at greater than 231. So I could, I could add that into my package JSON. Just giving you a feel for some of the and that would go under dev dependencies. I happen to know braces is used for testing. And um, it actually will not cause any problem for hosting because it's really just used for doing testing. It's under dev dependencies. And in fact, I believe that, so after you, after you do, after you add something to one of these objects, dependencies or dev dependencies, you need to, um, we npm install to try to pick that up. And npm audit looks like it's got a problem. Yeah, so even though I upgraded it, it's still giving me a problem. So there is some funky thing going on with this. And if you go out to 
you know, Google uh, braces library um, audit. You'll find that other people let's see again braces audit library. You'll find that other people are having the same problem with it, and then you can you can Google into it and you can find out yes, there's a problem, and in fact. Even when you add this, it doesn't fix it. So that's kind of annoying, but it's not it's not really the bigger problem, which is that when I deploy to um, GitHub, like I'm seeing out here, when I deploy out here, GitHub doesn't even like my version of, of Bootstrap. It says, you're going to need that next version. So I'm just going to grab that and add that. And this one happens to be, I'm going to replace this bootstrap version 421 with this version. So let's say we're going to want to do an npm install again to pull that in. And if you ever are curious about the versions that you are installing, if you look under node modules, you'll see that every single package, and there's a lot of them that contain the JavaScript or CSS that's used to build your project are under here. And if I find Bootstrap in here, I can actually check on its version by looking at its package JSON. So now that I've updated my pa my own package JSON to say give me 3431, it's, it should give me something, yes, I should get greater than 431 now. So that should probably take care of the GitHub issue. But once again, all of this maintenance is really just for the sole purpose of being able to rebuild Bender. And Bender happens to be what I'm pointing at in my, all of my HTML. So if you look in, for instance, index.html, I'm pointing at Bender Bootstrap CSS. And so I need, if I want to maintain that vendor for Bootstrap and jQuery, then I can continue to maintain my package JSON. And if, if run into security alerts, I can come in and run, you know, add to my package JSON based on the security alert um, notification and, and media, remediation. Or, um, you know, the other thing I can do to take care of this is not rely on a downloaded vendor system. So this is purely if I am maybe doing some development on this template and I need to regenerate vendor because I'm actually changing CSS, you know, or I'm, you know, upgrading Bootstrap as I did here. Um, or, you know, I need to regenerate these bootstrap CSS files or this jQuery. You know, so those are the, those kind of things um, I need, I, if I want to maintain those and work on those, I need to continue to do this. However, um, I most likely just want to maybe add some additional CSS to my project. And so the way that I would do that, so I would not rely on the vendor CSS for anything. What I would do uh, instead is I would use one of the alternative methods of getting Bootstrap in there. And if you go to getbootstrap.com, you'll see it gives you three methods. One, installing Bootstrap with NPM, which is what the template creators have done, or using Bootstrap CDN uh, to bring in the bootstrap uh, the bootstrap CSS file and then the JS popper JS and jQuery files so those are listed down here and this means if I wanted to do this that let's say instead of so if I went to one of my HTML files that was including this bootstrap I would replace it with a CDN. And so then it just becomes upon me to upgrade my CDN. If I find out that Bootstrap is upgraded, I need to go back into my HTML and do this upgrade here 
but I no longer am dependent on this vendor directory and, and maintaining it through gulp and package JSON. And likewise down here, um, I do not have to rely on those. I can go out and just grab the CDN. So I'm just going directly to a source that is pre-compiled and ready to use. So that's probably the way I would do it. And then if I wanted to do some of my own, so you can see there's a CSS file that is uh, linked in here. I would not change the CSS in this file. This is strictly modern business. Instead, I would add a new file like style.css. And then I would link that in. So if I just copy that, and then I would bring in style.css. And I would put it at the very end of the other for the cascading effect to pick up my styles over anybody else's. So by adding my own style sheet, then I can go to style and I, I can just put in my own styles here. So let's say I decide I want the background color to be red. And then I can just, you know, rely on that for, for adding my, um, my personal styling. And once I've done that, so now I am, you know, I'll have, I, I would, the thing is when you get one of these templates, don't leave all this stuff that you're not using. If you're not doing blogs, if you're not doing FAQs, just go ahead and delete it. You know, you only need to keep what you plan on using. So just go ahead and clean that up. And then what you should be left with is just the files that you are actually linking to. So in the case of CDNs, there's nothing that's all out on the internet. The CDNs are, are being maintained on a CDN server. So really in that case, I should be down to just my, my HTML files that are actually being used. Um, and then I can get rid of all of these files that I'm not using. I'm not doing anything with mail. I'm, you know, none of that is being used. Um, and then I can also delete, I can go ahead and delete package JSON. I'm not going to be doing any building. I can delete package lock JSON. No, no building there. I can remove um, the gulp file. You know, so I can really just pair my my template down to the actual files that are being used you know and if you accidentally create delete a file you know you can always get it back because it's, it's out there on the web or it's in your github repo and so by by pairing this down you're going to make this a lot easier to maintain you know you're going to have less files you're not going to be dealing with package json github won't flag you for security alerts you won't be running npm install to do maintenance so I really recommend that, yes, you, you, there, it's helpful to start with a, one of these templates, but you want to take the time to reduce it down to just the things that you need in it, just the things that are needed to, to run it. Okay, well, I hope that helps. And again, you know, looking at Start Bootstrap, you do, there are two ways, and generally this npm install, that's for doing some development and, and doing some builds. Maybe you're using SAS and you need to build that into CSS, or maybe you just want to have the ability to recreate your um, vendor directories like we're doing in the modern business template. But if you just want to get this down to a, a manageable bit of code, uh, I recommend using the CDNs. All right. All right, so just coming back, I, I made a decision for my template, for my app, that all I need is the index, start, and about, and a services. And in doing that, um, and I've got my red background, I was able to get my, my whole file, my whole file system really cleaned up so that all I've got is the modern business CSS, the style CSS, the 404, which we want to keep around to deal, you know, with, with missing pages, the about, the index, and the services, and the license. Um, it's probably a good idea to add, you know, a README markdown and do some notes on what you've been doing, give credit to, to the Start Bootstrap 
modern business template, that kind of thing. But this is a much easier to manage set of files, and so I recommend that you take the time when you're using a template like this to really get it down to just what you need. All right.